Kelly Meller. And I'm Glenn Gregerson with Coastal Enterprises. In this segment, we'll be talking about the FSC 88WB water-based primer filler. As you can see, when we open up the lid, this primer is a lot thicker than what you're normally used to. Don't be concerned about that because that's how the FSC 88WB has been made. When you work with Precision Board or any other HDU, you want a primer that is higher in solids. FSC 88WB has about twice as many solids as most other water-based primers. This means when you prime with 88WB, you're left with about twice the amount of dry material on the board compared to other primers. This means less priming, less production time, and that means a more profitable job. Another nice thing about 88WB is that it doesn't separate or skin over. You get the same consistency throughout the whole gallon while you are working with it. And if you want to use it as an all-purpose primer, you just thin it down about 45% with water. Then you can use it on wood, metal, styrene, or any other type of material. This means you get about two gallons of primer for the price of one. And if you'd like to use it to fill seams, it's also great for that. Just put it on something absorbent, like wood or cardboard, let it body up a bit, and you can fill small seams, nicks, glue lines, and etc. Of course, we also have the FSC 360, which is our putty grade material for larger cracks and repair work. Another great thing about the FSC 88WB is that it's compatible with all types of paints, which means anything will adhere to it, such as solvent-based enamels, acrylics, and even automotive polyurethanes. A lot of people think that because FSC 88WB is so much thicker than other primers that you're limited in the way that you can apply it. As a matter of fact, you can brush, spray, roll, or even squeegee it on. When brushing, what I like to do is take some of the FSC 88WB out of the can and reduce about 1 to 2 percent with water. What you want to achieve is for the primer to have a milkshake-like consistency, something that is creamy and yet flows. When mixing, if it's not the right consistency, add a little more water. When applying, make sure to wet out all the cells. This means to prime in a couple different directions first to make sure that the primer is pushed down into the cut cells. Then brush in one direction and make sure that you are applying enough primer so your coat will look creamy. When you have a creamy looking coat, and you'll know what that is when you see it, then walk away. If you continue to work with it, it will start disrupting what you did. The primer starts to set up pretty fast. As Glenn mentioned before, wait about 20 to 30 minutes or until tack free, then apply a second creamy coat if necessary. Do not sand in between coats. You want and need enough primer on the precision board to do all the sanding in the primer. Because you don't have to sand in between coats, you save money because of less production time. When rolling FSC 88WB, reduce it with water to a milkshake-like consistency as Kelly mentioned earlier. Using a short nap roller, apply a smooth, creamy coat, making sure to work it into the cells of the precision board. Do not use a foam roller, as it will pick the primer back up, resulting in a thin mill build and not enough primer thickness to sand smooth. This is sometimes indicated by a textured orange peel surface. If you've used a foam roller before, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. Again, if a second coat is required, wait until the primer is tack free and then you're ready to apply your next coat. When spraying, reduce 1 to 3 percent with water. An HVLP, high volume low pressure spray gun, is a good gun to work with. Make sure to use as large of a spray tip as possible and try not to reduce more than necessary because the more you reduce, the more it will be like an all-purpose primer and the more priming you'll have to do. If it spatters when coming out of the gun or is drying too fast when it hits the board, try thinning a little more with water or turn down the pressure. If you need further assistance, call our technical department. You can also use a squeegee to apply FSC 88WB. One of the great things is how versatile 88WB is. Many types of squeegees can be used, such as drywall, vinyl, the spatula type. It just depends on your personal preference. You can either use it right out of the can or slightly reduce it with water. To start the process, pour WB directly onto the precision board surface, then take a standard short nap roller and evenly roll it out to cover the entire piece. Be sure to work it into the surface while rolling it out to achieve total surface wet out like we talked about earlier. Using a light hand, 
pull the primer across the board with the squeegee to get a nice, flat, even surface. This may take a little practice, but once you have this down, the squeegee method can really speed things up. You can make precision board look like wood or any other substrate, but don't expect it to dry like wood. The drying of FSC88WB or any water-based product is very important when working with precision board or any other substrate. Just like we talked about in the precision board section, precision board is a closed cell product and everything dries through the top. We recommend putting the prime piece under a shop fan for at least four hours before sanding. Yes, FSC88WB does dry faster than most other water-based primers because of the high amount of solids. However, drying time will vary in different parts of the country depending on heat and humidity. Now that the sign has been sitting under the fan for four hours, it is ready to test to make sure the primer is dry. We recommend sanding with 220 grit sandpaper in a couple of different areas across your sign. It's a good idea to do it in several areas since it's possible the primer has been applied in different thicknesses. If any balling or streaking occurs on your sandpaper, then put the item back under the shop fan for a little while longer. When the primer is completely dry in all areas, it will powder when sanded. At this point, you are ready to completely sand the rest of your sign. After sanding, the last thing to do before painting or masking, even if your sign has sat for one month, a day, or was just sanded, is to place it back under the shop fan for at least one hour. Having the fan blow over the prime sign for at least an hour will prevent any complications from moisture reabsorption. Moisture reabsorption is caused from moisture in the air returning back into the dried primer. Moisture is always looking for a dry place to go. As we all know, the same thing is happening with wood. While we've controlled the little amount of water we've manufactured into the WB primer, we cannot control the amount of water out there in the environment. So, always use a shop fan. As we have mentioned, precision board is a closed cell material that does not absorb anything. This is a great feature of precision board that allows it to outlast wood by at least 10 times. However, since precision board does not absorb like wood, it must be primed and painted differently with different considerations. If materials like primers are not allowed to fully dry during the priming and painting process, blistering will usually occur. Delamination can also occur from applying any mask, such as sandblast, router, or spray mask over the primer or paint before it is totally dry. Let's take these situations one at a time. Usually, paint blistering is caused from applying paint over the primer before the primer has completely dried. Since precision board does not absorb anything, the vapor drive of the drying primer cannot go any other way but out. When this outgassing pushes up against the paint hard enough, it stretches the paint and creates a blister. This blister will be a combination of primer and paint. Another common reason for paint blisters is that the sign was placed in the sun for the paint to dry or was installed before the paint had completely cured. The result is that the sun and the heat really speeds up the drying of the paint. As the paint skin gets thicker and thicker, the paint vapors cannot pass through fast enough without building up pressure. When the paint skin is pushed hard enough by this outgassing pressure, it will create blisters. These paint blisters, as they pull loose, will usually take some primer with them. You can prove this to yourself by cutting open a blister and looking at the underside. You will see indications of paint and or primer sticking to the inside of the blister, with some still remaining adhered to the precision board. Delamination between the primed or painted precision board surface and the sandblast or router mask can also occur in the primer if it is not allowed to totally dry before applying the mask, even if you're using the proper tack, like we talked about earlier. The heat from the blasting grit will cause a primer to start drying again, creating a vapor drive up towards the surface. When the vapor drive hits the mask, it cannot go through, so it accumulates there at the interface of the mask, making the primer soften, causing the bond of the mask to the primer to fail and the mask to be blown off. 
The same principle applies to the router mask. In this case, the friction of the cutter creates the heat, which causes the vapor drive and the resultant delamination. Delamination usually does not cover the entire surface, as some of the primer has dried sufficiently and does not create enough vapor drive to cause a separation. Typically with primer delamination, you will see small amounts of white primer on what looks to be bare precision board. It usually takes a magnifying glass to see the adhered primer in the bottom of the cells. As you can see, the reason for all three of these situations is the same. Make sure that the primer is dry before applying a coat of paint and make sure the paint is fully cured before installation of the sign. So, always place your sign under a large shop fan for at least a few hours, overnight if possible, before painting or installing it. This will usually solve all vapor drive related potential problems before they happen. We have noticed that this happens more in the spring and fall because of greater temperature differential, hot during the day and colder at night. What this obviously means is that the primer or paint will dry faster when it's warmer and slower when it's colder. This is always occurring, but it's much more severe in the spring and fall. So keep an eye on the weather. Now that you're ready to paint and everything has been primed, make sure to paint all the way around the sign for paint tension balance. Because HDU does not have a grain structure like wood, painting must be done differently. Paint needs to be applied to all sides of your sign in the same amount of coats and thickness to keep the paint from pulling in the direction of the thicker coat. This has become more important because paint manufacturers are changing formulations to meet the ever-changing clean air laws. These changes have made the paint last longer, which is good, but it also means that it's stronger and tends to shrink more as it cures, which can cause bowing and warping. It does not matter if the paint is the same color on both sides. Just make sure to use the same type of paint in the same amount of coats. Exactly. Even if you are doing a single-sided sign, paint equally on both sides. This is a good time to use those not-so-popular colors that you have sitting around your shop on the back side of your sign. Before we end this segment, there are a few things that we'd like to mention. The FSC 88WB has a shelf life of about two years and like all water-based products should not be allowed to freeze. When sandblasting, make sure to use a medium tack mask for pre-primed surfaces and a high tack for unprimed. Because of the closed cell nature of HDU, not all paints and primers will adhere directly to it. That's one of the reasons that we recommend using FSC 88WB. Since we formulated it for Precision Board, we know that it will adhere for the long term. If you want to learn more about the cellular makeup of HDU, then check out the Precision Board section of this video. Now that we've talked to you about the FSC 88WB and how to use it, we'd like to finish up by summarizing a few of the things that we just went over. You can brush, spray, roll, or squeegee it. Slightly reduce with water and apply in a creamy coat. Do not sand between coats. You want and need the primer thickness. It's compatible with all types of paints. Make sure to use a shop fan over the surface before painting or masking. Do not dry outside. Do not go too fast. Allow for adequate drying time. Paint all the way around sign for paint tension balance. If you ever have any questions, please call our 800 number. We have a great technical department just waiting to help. Thank you for your time and for using Precision Board products. Mm -hmm.